Ever heard of super missile weld? When I was working at Delta Airlines Tech Ops, I was working in the metallurgical lab at the time, and I visited one of the shops and they had some super missile weld there, and they used it to tack weld hot rolled steel temporary fixtures. And I asked the lead mechanic, why are you buying this expensive rod to tack weld hot rolled steel? He said, well, it works great. Small tacks are really strong. It doesn't bubble and spit. And I like to have it around for when G-jobs come in the door. I took a piece of the rod and I was working in the metallurgical lab. So I put it in the XRF spectrometer, came up a dead match for 312. Now, that doesn't mean it's exactly 312 because they can, when they call it super missile weld instead of 312, that means they can switch around and tweak the composition a little bit. I welded a high carbon steel pen not too long ago for a favor for somebody. Usually I say no to such things, but it looked like a 20 minute job. And I could tell it was a high carbon steel and it had sheared off, brittle fracture. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. And I thought, okay, I think I can make something work there for the guy. He said, I can't find this, this certain thread configuration anywhere. Can you fix this? So what I'm gonna do for today's video is I'm gonna mock up the same situation and show you how I fixed it. In order to show you what a brittle fracture looks like, I welded some high carbon drill rod to this piece of plate and then I whopped it with a hammer. It broke pretty easily. This is essentially what that high carbon spring loaded pin looked like on the fractured surface. It had a shoulder on it like this, so the first thing I did was I ground it down smooth. So because it's high carbon, I decided to put a buttering overlay pass of 312 stainless. A Jazzy 10 ceramic is about the best choice for this application and overlaying beads of stainless. You want good coverage when you're overlaying beads. I set the machine to 100 amps and just used the foot pedal knowing I wouldn't need nearly 100 amps, especially on this first bead around that corner. This would actually be a good application for some high speed pulse but easy enough to do without pulse. Just got to work the foot pedal, use just enough heat to flow the metal, and no more than that. And so that's only taking about 58 amps right now. Even though this is a mock-up and this is only medium carbon steel, I'm running the bead around the edge to kind of preheat the metal because I'm not worried about it cracking out here on the very edge of the shoulder. And this will get everything good and hot. And then I'll just continue running beads until I get a nice overlay of 312 stainless on this whole surface. I'll let it cool just a little bit in between beads, but I sped it up a little bit for the sake of a short video. 312 stainless won't respond to heat treatment, won't harden upon quick cooling. That makes it a good rod for high carbon steels, medium carbon steels, dissimilar metals, and cladding operations like this. Because even if there's a lot of carbon in the steel and it mixes in with the bead, it still won't harden. And it retains its ductility and that's a good thing. So a buttering pass like this is a fairly common practice in a lot of different industries. And both 312 and 309 filler metals are often used for buttering. Super Missile Weld advertises that it's a good rod for use when the exact composition of the steel is unknown or can't be determined. Same goes for 312. Now, if it's a critical weld, you should know the composition of the steel. But there are all kinds of situations where we just need to get something done that aren't critical welds. We need to weld stainless to cast iron or something like that. A cup like the Jazzy 10 with those secondary diffusers does a great job on something like this that's just getting red hot. And otherwise would just get all gray and oxidized and scaly. After I finished that overlay on that pen, the high carbon pen, I ground it off nice and smooth. I put me a center punch mark in the center. I didn't do that right here on the mock-up. You can see I put a nice little chamfer around the edge of the 5 16 pen. And I used a third hand to get a tack on it. One little small tack. Now I could have buttered the pen too and then put a bevel on it. But my thinking was that little short pin is going to get really red hot. It's going to cool down nice and slow because I'm going to make sure it does. The problem with welding really small round parts like this is the backside gets red hot and scales and oxidizes. So I use a little aluminum foil as kind of an argon dam to trap some argon gas from that nice big jazzy tin cup. 
that will make the other side flow in just a little bit better. If you've ever welded something really small like this and then the first side goes in great and the other side kind of spits and sputters and doesn't flow as well, a little argon dam like I just used with aluminum foil can really help. Now I'm just going to put a final pass and, and put a nice little, nice kind of little, uh, I don't know, a little fillet on this thing. I think one of the reasons the original pin failed is because it didn't have any radius. Just kind of an abrupt sharp corner from that shoulder to the pin. So I'm putting a little radius here by putting a fillet on there. I took the actual pin when it was finished and, and I hit it with a little flap disc to kind of smooth off the weld just a little bit, but I left a lot of reinforcement on there as much as I could so that most of the load would be on that fillet and not on any sharp corner. So now you can see that that little short rod, that little short pin there is red hot and I tapped the pedal a few times to kind of slow the cooling rate as well as to maintain some shielding gas on there. <laughs>